praise the Lord, everyone. Who's glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. I'd like to welcome everyone to New Life Pentecostal Church, where we believe that you can be rescued, redeemed, and restored. Who believes that tonight? Amen. At this time, our pastor's going to come make a few announcements. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, we can be a little louder than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is good to be in church tonight. Praise God. We serve a mighty God, amen? Amen. I don't know about you, but I serve a mighty God. Amen? All right. Uh, we're going to make the announcements very quickly. As always, you can scan the QR code. You can pull out your phone and scan that, and they give you service times. And you can even take and share that screenshot and send it to somebody and invite them to church. Also, every Tuesday night, prayer meeting here at the church at 7.30. Last night was youth prayer. Amen. Thankful for the parents that brought their children out last night. If you have a, ch a teenager, bring them to youth prayer. Amen. If you're a young person, try to make it to youth prayer. 30, 45 minutes. Amen. Prayer will change your life. Also, every Tuesday night at 6 p.m., there's a small group Bible study that's meeting Right there, uh, right off the foyer in our temporary youth room. Uh, Brother Crowder leads that Bible study. It's a great Bible study. Last night was no different. We discussed Lazarus and his raising from the dead and how he died, but yet God knew he was going to die. The Lord knew he was going to die, but yet that didn't mean that God didn't love him. And God still worked in his life, amen. So just because you may be going through something doesn't mean God doesn't love you, amen. Also, addiction recovery. Everybody say addiction recovery. Tomorrow night, 7 p.m., God is good. God's blessing that group, and I'm excited to just see what God has in store. Also, there is an email back, uh, prayer list, sign up. Uh, it may have been picked up. So is it, has it been picked up? But if you would like, amen, if you would like to be on the prayer sign up, the email, the email list that goes out, uh, if there's a, an urgent prayer request, like today there was an urgent prayer request. Ethan, Sister Pam's grandson, had to be taken to the hospital. Th an urgent prayer request. If you'd like to be on that prayer team, let my wife know. We've already put it together, but another name can be added with no problem. Um, we just try to update that every year with fresh email addresses uh, in case people have changed their email address or what have you. So if you, if you didn't write yours down, let her know tonight we can get you added. Also, daily Bible reading schedule. Sister Kendra's putting that on social media for the week. So you can see that, know what you're supposed to read. But if you'll also notice on the table before you go out of the sanctuary, the bread charts are there. There's one for children, one for adults. Read your Bible through this year, amen? Read your Bible through. I read my Bible through every year, and I promise you, you learn the Word of God doing it. Um, if you have not started yet, you're only a few days behind, I promise you. You're only about 40 minutes of Bible reading that you got to catch up. That's not far at all. You can be caught up and really turn your uh, the Bible on and let it read to you on the way to work, and you can be there. So get that started. If you did read your Bible through last year, please let me know. Only one person has let me know, and I know that others did. So let me know. We're going to recognize you. Also, our boys... And girls Bible study group is going on a trip this Friday. Amen. If you have a boy or a girl going on the trip or want them to go on the trip, want to get rid of them, send them down the road. After church, before you leave here, come up here, Brother Ty, Brother Jonathan, Sister Brittany. They're going to be up here gathering information. It only costs $25. There is a permission form. There's a little bit of information we need to get. It's ages 10 and up. Uh, I know for the uh, van age, it's ages 10 and up. Uh, there are some things you need to bring. They'll talk about that. It is very, very, very important that you tonight talk to them, let them know. Also, guest speaker this Sunday, Brother Antoine Irvin. He is a tremendous preacher. He's preached for us years ago. Uh, Sister Rachel, you've been here how long? 12 years and you didn't remember, so maybe I've been around here a long time. Maybe it was 13 years ago. It's been a while, 
I think my dad was still the pastor, but he's a tremendous evangelist. He also has a brother who's a pretty good evangelist too, preaches some pretty good conferences. But great men of God, they are local. They are from New Life in Birmingham. Great ministers, great men of God. I'm looking forward to Sunday, somebody's life being set free. Amen? Amen. Also, 21 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, pay attention. You're going to see some information on social media in the coming weeks as we promote prayer and fasting. Uh, but it's going to start Sunday. So the last meal that you eat Sunday afternoon begins your fast. We fast caffeine. We fast meat. We fast sweets. If you've never done the fast, I encourage you to participate in some form or fashion. Also, January the 13th, we have a men's work day here at the church. We've got a lot to do, a lot of things to get done around here preparing for construction. So we need you to be here. Uh, last thing I'm going to say, and I need your, your prayer and your help with this, okay, tonight. We have run into a snag in the permitting process. And it's nothing to do with our drawings of the building. The problem is with planning the, the zoning review. Um, and, and it's not a big deal. It's a very simple fix. It's a timely fix. Our property is comprised of two parcels. That's not a big deal. We own both parcels. But because our new building sits over both of them, it becomes a big deal. So we have to get it resurveyed. We have to go through the whole little, just the dog and pony show with the county and the state because our property touches, guess what, State Highway 25. So it's a little bit lengthy process. It's going to take a few weeks to get through this. Be patient with us. Be patient with us. Be patient with us. We are rip running, roaring, and ready to go. The biggest prob problem with this is, is we've got a building, a metal building, that within eight weeks is going to be sitting out here on the ground ready to install. We definitely want, would like to be close for it to be ready uh, because all that's, all, everything's in motion. This little thing has hit us. So I'm asking you to be in prayer. God can speed this up. God can give us favor. So let's just pray about it. Trust the Lord. Amen. All right, let's stand together tonight. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I'm glad to see so many out tonight. Amen. You've started the year outright in church. Amen. Now, I notice you've seen the music department before service. They're going to be gathering to pray before service. Amen. When they pray, you're welcome to pray. Amen. 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 How many of you are ready to have some good church? Let's lift those hands to the Lord. Love you, Jesus, and we praise you, God, tonight for your many blessings. We ask, God, that you touch our hearts tonight. Move in this service, Lord. God, set somebody free tonight by the power of your spirit. God, let the word of God change somebody's life. Lord, let there be a powerful anointing in the name of Jesus. We praise you together tonight and worship you, Lord.
don't you lift your hands in worship? Come on, somebody lift up the name of the Lord. Adore you. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands in worship the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and praise the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's worship him right now. time if I could ask our ushers to come forward tonight. Amen. Remember your tithes and offerings tonight. Remember the building fund. I promise you uh, the enemy wants to hinder and hurt and slow down every way he can. Give. The Bible says give and it shall be given unto you. Brother, one of the things that Brother Crowder and the Addiction Recovery Ministry is teaching in that class is learn to be a giver and not just a taker. Amen. Learn how to give. Amen. You can give out of depression. You can give your way out of bankruptcy. I believe that. You can give your way out of a bad attitude if you'll learn to serve something bigger than yourself. Amen. Give and it shall be given. Amen. Amen. I, and I'm going to butcher it, but there was a text sent to me today. The only vessel that God rejects is one that's full of itself. Amen. Learn to pour out of you yourself into somebody, into the kingdom of God. Amen. Let's worship tonight as we give given the offering. Lord, we ask that you bless this offering. Bless all those that are here that have come prepared to give into the house for your glory. Bless those that have not in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship as we sing. Thank God for the blood. It said I want to Sore and sad with bleeding heart and aching head till Jesus came and sweetly said, I'll take your sins away. Oh, thank God. Spirit and the 
take about 30 seconds not to belabor the evening turn to somebody tonight and tell them that you're glad to see them in church oh if you turn to the person you came here with shame on you find somebody else find somebody else and tell them you're glad to see them tonight Praise the Lord. There is nothing wrong with learning to love people. Loving the person that you go to church with. Amen. I hope somebody loves me. I'm drinking out of two water bottles up here and I don't know which one's mine. Amen. What are the chances one of those are yours, baby? Not a chance at all. Amen. All right, musicians and singers. I appreciate you tonight ushering in the presence of the Lord. Now, I'm telling you, there was anointing when they got on the platform tonight. Amen. I felt the anointing of the Lord, and I know they felt it as they sing and they worshiped. Amen. Come on, somebody praise God for the anointing to fall. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you. Be in prayer for Sister Bean. She is having a slow recovery. I know she wants it to be faster than it is. You can be seated just a moment while the children are making their way. It's going to take them a moment. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And, and musicians and singers, hurry up and make your way back in here for the word of God tonight. There is an announcement 
that I need to make. I made it um, I made it Sunday, but some of you may not have been here. And I want to make it now. And I do make it with all love, care, and sweetness. Please do not bring sweet teas, sodas, Mountain Dews, Gatorades, slushies, whatever in the sanctuary. Coffees, cappuccinos, macchiatos, chai lattes. Let's don't bring that in the sanctuary, okay? Um, I know everybody can read the signs on the doors that come into the sanctuary. Um, if you have to have a water, that is fine. Please don't bring anything stained. Amen. We're building a million-dollar building next door. The last thing we need to do is spend about $10,000, replace carpet, and another ten to replace the chair covers because somebody has stained every single one of them. So please take care of the Lord's house. Amen? Take care of the Lord's house. I've heard people, I've grown up in church all my life, and I've heard people say, I don't give my money to the church because I don't know how they spend it. Well, they probably spend it fixing something you tore up. And the church said amen. Amen. The only people that complain about how the church spends money typically is the people that don't put any money in the church. Amen. All right, I guarantee. All right, tonight I'm going to be teaching on Christian living, and by no means is this teaching a all-encompassing lesson. Okay? Because we don't have time to start at Genesis and make it all the way to Revelations front to back tonight. You just can't get it all. And I'm telling you, every book of the Bible has something in it to teach a Christian how to live. Every, every single book. That's why you need to read your Bible so that you can learn what God expects out of you. And let me tell you, God expects something out of you. There, there's teachings and there's beliefs out there that God don't care what you do. That's a lie. The Bible says that the tree that don't bring forth fruit, what's going to happen? It's going to be a lot hewn down. And I, now, some of you may not be familiar with the King's English that we read in the KJV Bible. Hewn is a real spiritual fancy way of saying we're going to chop it down. The Lord will cut you down to size if you don't learn how to grow in Him. Amen? Learn. Get in the Bible and find out what God wants out of you. So that's where we're going to be tonight, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Stand with me for the reading of the word. We're going to read a lot tonight, but I'm going to make you stand for the one. Amen. If you don't know and if you've not been raised in church, I'm going to tell you we stand to honor the word of God when we read it together. That's why we do it. Amen. It's a new year, new month. We're teaching you new things. 1 Corinthians 13 and 11. When you have it, say amen. All right. When I was a child. I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. You can be seated tonight. After receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you are born again. When you're born again of the water, in Jesus' name, baptism, and spirit filled with the Holy Ghost, you have been born again. So you are a baby in Christ. What do babies must do? Say it again. I heard something. Grow. Not only do they, what if, brother, sister, before you leave with the good brother Gideon, he is the cutest little thing. But if he grew to be seven foot tall, and he still had the baby fat, and he still kind of had the mobility of, how old is he this year? 21, oh Lord, that's how women, they trick us men with that kind of, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, he's not quite two years. But if he had the mobility, he's very mobile for his age, but is he mobile for an 18 year old boy? No. He says some, he's saying some words, right, Sister Cheetah? Is he saying complete sentences yet? Boys in here. 
whole paragraph. Not, okay, not paragraphs. Yet. He doesn't know the Gettysburg Address just yet. He's close. He's got the four score. So, but if when he was 18, 20, 30, and he still had that vocabulary that he has now, you would think that they would have it. Amen? As a matter of fact, if he got to be three or four and hadn't got to where they think, mom and dad thinks, he, they're going to take him to the doctor. They're going to bring him to the house of God first, get him prayed over. Then they're going to take him to the doctor and say, doctor, check this boy out. Why? Because babies are supposed to grow. Babies are supposed to develop. Right? You just can't be. And look at Zara. How cute she looks. What does that face, David? And, 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 and she's sweet. And she's innocent, Brother David. But you know there's going to come a time, Brother David. When that daughter of yours has a driver's license. And if she doesn't get to that place, it needs to be because we've been raptured. But if she's 45 and can't drive, it's a problem. Y'all want me to pick on Brother David one more time? I mean, she is sweet and she's beautiful. There's going to come a time when your little daughter gets married. Oh, yeah. Hey, and then she has babies and sends them to you to babysit. If she didn't, something, you'd think she's not growing and developing. As a child of God, you should be growing and developing. If you're not You've got a problem. You, you've got a learning disability. You've disabled your learning and you won't learn from the Bible. Amen? I'm not talking about one that you can't help. Let me tell you how you learn this. The Holy Ghost. Reading and listening. Every one of those things are easy to get. The Holy Ghost easy to get. You got to want it. You got to want it. Well, I don't read good. Nobody said you had to read good to read. Just practice. Just, just practice. Take this. If you're a slow reader, read slowly, but read. Read your Bible. Is anybody, and don't raise your hand, anybody here struggle to read? Sure. Sure. A lot of people. Does that mean we just give up? Well, is it, how about this? Anybody here have trouble staying focused? Uh, my hands are full. Let me set something down. There is a room. I'll be at it. There are people that say that I have a bad attention deficit problem. Amen? But let me tell you what I've learned how to do. I've learned how to listen to the preacher. Well, you did all the preaching. I got in my truck yesterday morning, turned on a preacher, and listened to him all the way to work. All the way. Discipline yourself. Discipline yourself to hear the Word of God. And then take what you've read, what you've heard, and what the Holy Ghost has impressed on you and put it in your life, put it into practice. Let me tell you something else. You're not going to make it as a Christian growing and developing if you don't get under the ministry. If you don't get under the ministry in your local church. Now, I, I, listen, I don't have a whole lot of stock I put in TV preachers. If you do, I'm sorry. I just don't. I don't put a lot of stock in it. Uh, and, and let me tell you that God planted you in a city God planted you in an area, and God planted a pastor in your life. Amen? Let me tell you this. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 and 11 through 16, read it. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, evangelists, some pastors, teachers. Well, why did he give it? To entertain us on TV, on Sunday afternoon broadcasting? No. He gave it for a special reason, for the perfecting 
Of what? Of what? Of the saints. You know what helps the saints get better? The ministry God put in their life. God, but you see, most people don't grow because they won't come and sit under the pastor. Because whenever they're, or maybe they like the pastor, they don't do what he says, but they like his style. But maybe when there's a lay minister up here, or there's an evangelist, or, or there's a, a, a guest speaker, they'll lay out that day, or they'll get up and walk out early. I, I, I see some people, and let me tell you, I'm just, I'm meddling in pastors. I gave a pastor for like two more minutes. I've seen people, Brother McCammon, that on the nose, at 12 o'clock, they get up and walk out. You usually, sister, you usually stay with me all the way to the end. Usually you do. That, no, right, right, yeah, I'm not talking about emergency. I'm not, I'm not talking about emergency. I'm not talking about emergency. I'm talking about, I've seen people, and there's nobody in here. Nobody in here, it's not Sister Kate. Nobody in here. But at, at the stroke of 12, they get their stuff, and they leave, and the sermon's closing. That meant they made up in their mind before they got there, no matter what God did, no matter what the preacher said, they would not be moved. I remember the old song that says, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I sh and they're right. Not the way the song says it, they're right. No matter what God says to them, they won't be moved. Please, don't close your heart off to the leading of the Holy Ghost in a service when the minister's preaching. This preacher that's coming Sunday hadn't preached here in 15 years. He, he only knows one or two of you guys. But God's already given him a message for this church. God's already, he, he messaged me the other day. He said, God's already been dealing with me about this church. I said, I said thank God for the Holy Ghost. Because what that is, that's the Spirit of God speaking. Fantastic. Fantastic. He's already coming with a burden for this church. So that's why the ministry is here. You read verse 13, till we all come to unity, faith, knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The plan is for us to grow, for us to develop. Verse 14, that we henceforth no more be children. It's okay if when you're born again, you're a baby in Christ. But after three, four, five years, six years, ten years living for God, you need to be mature. You need to be teaching a Bible study. You need to be sharing your faith. Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, right? He'd been in the church three years. Well, he'd not been in the church. He'd been with Jesus three years. The church was only an hour old. But he'd been with Jesus three years. But after three years, he had to step up to the plate. He had to step forward. Amen? Some of these men had only been walking with the Lord for a little time. But they had to be used of God. The Bible says in the book of Acts, And you shall receive, I say it, power after what? How many of you have the Holy Ghost? Raise your hand. You have power. Now, what is that? Do you have power to make the lights flicker and hocus pocus? No. No. What do you have? What does the Bible say? Power to be what? Say it again louder. Witness. Witness. You have the power. What is that power? You have a testimony. You have a testimony. Now, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, it says, lay aside all malice, guile, hypocrisy, envy, evil speaking. Now, is there anybody here tonight that you've been filled with the Holy Ghost? Shout amen. All right. Stop having malicious things come out of you. Okay. I'm going to elaborate a little bit because I've seen some of you the last month through so social media posts. All right, lay aside malice. Well, what is a good definition of malice? Anybody? Malicious. What is it? Does anybody know? Oh, say I heard it. 
bad in, if you've got bad intentions, don't do it. Don't do it. Give me an example. You ready for this? If you're going to give some money to the poor and you're only giving it because somebody else gave some and you're just going to try to give a dollar more than they did, don't even give it because you're giving it for the wrong reason. That's, that's an example of malice. If you're going to do anything, let it be done with the right spirit, a right attitude. Listen to this. All guile. Do you know what guile is? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to paint a picture. Can I paint a gross picture for you? Has anybody ever had that old stuff in your congestion? You cough it up. It's gross, isn't it? You know what? That's called bile. But bile and guile are very close to being the same thing. Bile is the old nasty phlegm of the, the natural body. Guile is the old nasty phlegm of your spiritual body. That's, that's what it is. So if you've got guile coming out of you, you need to fix where it's coming from. Listen, if somebody wronged you 25 years ago, you can't go undo what they did to you. But you're not going to make it to heaven if you keep dragging it back out from under the blood of Jesus. And that one, Brother Johnny, it kind of hit a nerve, I think. Let me say it again. You're not going to make it to heaven if you keep bringing somebody else's sins out from under the blood of Jesus. Amen. You've got to, I'm going to give you an example. Jesus, as he was being crucified, Father, for forgive me. Stephen, as he's being stoned, said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Right? You see, kind of see the theme? You've got to let it go. Because if you don't let it go, that stuff's going to poison your spirit. Amen? So let me tell you how to know if you ain't got rid of it yet. If every time you get a wild hair, you have to get on Facebook and talk about and post how I'm living for God today and none of these haters, they're going to mess with me no more. You ain't let it go yet. Because if you got to talk about it, it's still in you. I don't care if you talk about because I got Jesus now. My neighbor, you know, they ain't bothering me even though they ugly. You still got guile in your spirit. It's still in there. It don't matter if you try to like put pretty words with it, you know. Listen, you could go put a sign in your neighbor's yard that says, the Lord fights my battles and nail it in their yard. Jesus don't like that. Don't matter how, how what scripture you use. You got to let him do it, stay out of it. But if you keep bringing this stuff back up, the Bible tells us about whenever they were sending the ark of God from Philistine, from the land of the Philistines because God was cursing the Philistines. And they were like, we got to get the ark of God back to Israel. Get it out of here. It got into Israel, and some of these Israelites found it. Okay, and I'm not going to go into the whole story. It's being pulled by an, a, a, a cart with two oxen. That have never been tied, and they had been separated from their young. Literally, it was a miracle of God that the thing got back to Israel. But that day, it was like twenty or thirty thousand people died that day. God killed them. Do you know why? Does anybody know why God killed them dead? And I'm not talking about Philistines. I'm talking about children of Israel. God killed them dead. Say it again. They opened up the ark. What's such a big deal about opening up the ark? You see what the ark is. They moved the lid, brother. The lid, the top of it, Sister Kay, is called the mercy seat. That's where, say, mercy. Guess what's underneath the mercy seat? Inside was the law of God, the broken law that every man is broke. If you want to get in way of the judgment of God, move mercy out of the way to look at somebody else's sin. Amen? Leave mercy where it is. Quit digging up the past. If you want to be a growing and developing Christian that acts like you know how to live for Jesus, start forgetting about everybody that's wronged you and hurt you and grow up spiritually. As newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if so be you have tasted that the Lord is good. Maybe you don't know how to grow and live for God because you've never tasted of the goodness of God. 
never tasted. Maybe you've never applied this to your life. Man, I, I hear people say all the time, man, the police is bad in this town. And I'm going to tell you, if you're speeding in this town, they're going to get you, amen? <laughs> Somebody said, how many of you got a ticket in the last six months? One, two, three, four, five. So, oh, man, put your hands down. <laughs> say it again. Say it. All right. Didn't get a ticket. How many of you been pulled over? got to raise both because I got pulled over more than, oh you got a ticket in my passenger seat I didn't thank you Lord I got one later though amen no I didn't they let me off for that too and praise God thank you Jesus for having mercy on me but you know what every time they pulled me over I was breaking the law I was speaking oh I was I was. I promise you, I was. And when they pulled me over and I was speeding, I couldn't find my insurance card. And let's be honest, if they'd have kept looking, my left blinker's out and it's still out tonight. So let me tell you this, the police ain't bad, I'm bad. And the Word of God told me I was. We're all sinners. Amen? So if ever trouble keeps just finding you, it's not because everybody around you is bad. It may be because you need to get your house in order. Somebody get your house in order. Amen. If I get pulled over tonight on the way home and they write me a ticket for my blinker, it's, I got nobody else to blame. If you don't make it to heaven, you got nobody else to blame because God's given you his word. He gave you his free spirit. He's put preachers that have preached their guts out to you. We got to grow. We got to develop. Looking at the time, we got to hurry. Amen. How many of you having fun tonight? Amen. You're not having fun, you don't know how. Prayer. Christians don't need to know how to pray. Prayer needs to be a central part of our daily walk with God. Amen. How many of you like awkward situations? How many of you just like to feel awkward? Nobody likes to feel awkward. I'm trying to who I can pick on. Yeah, yeah, you're the man. Perfect. This is perfect. I didn't even tell him anything. He's confused. He said, this is awkward. He said, you're just looking at me. You just stuck your hand. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. That's how we want to walk with. Well, that's how we want to walk with God. We just want to walk with God. We were like this back there, wasn't there? We would have been here. But see, if we're going to walk, you're sick. Well, Jesus is sticking his hand out to us, and we just expect us. We're not going to have any communication. But if we're going to walk with Jesus, he's reaching for us. He's got. You got to grab it. You got to grab it. You got to talk to the Lord. Your walk with God don't seem natural, and it seems like something off because it's spiritually awkward. It's spiritually awkward because you've got that social awkwardness, not just with everybody, but with Jesus. You're just standing looking at him like, Jesus is like, what's wrong with you, dude? What's wrong with you? You don't want to talk to me? I'm here. I'm here. You, you keep asking me, what do I want for your life? And, like, I've given you my word. Like, I wrote you a letter. You didn't even read it. How many of you like getting letters in the mail? I love it. And, and, and let me tell you something that the older people, the older generation is so much better at is cards. They are. They are. They are so much better at thank you cards. Inv it, listen, if you want me to go somewhere, do not send me an invitation on Facebook. I won't go out of principle. Hey, amen. I won't go out of principle because that's like a cop. -out. I, just, I don't know how because I don't even get on Facebook. At least tell me. Tell me.
me, call me. Call me. I'll take a phone call or a text. But I won't see a Facebook. But the older generation, Sister Kay has sent me a card the other I got it. I got scared when I got it. Because I was like, because the handwriting was so pretty. I'm like, this looks official. It might have been for my wife. That may have been who it was sent to. You sent her. What? And I thought, this looks, this looks official. Nobody sends these nice letters except the government. And, and, I see, and I seen it. And you know what I did? She took the time to send it. I took the time to. You hear me now? He took the time to send it. He took the time to send it. Somebody, Jesus took the time to send it. All these letters. All these letters. Let's read them. Talk with God. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 16 11, Seek the, thee the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. The Bible says in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, Seek, ye shall find. Knock. And ye, it shall be opened unto you. And then in the Bible says in Matthew, if any of I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, they shall ask that shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. The Bible tells us that we are to overcome temptation by prayer. Matthew 26. That we're to pray always, Luke 18. That we are to pray in his name, in the name of Jesus, John 16. That we are to continue in prayer. Not just pray uh, at New Year's Eve service when you feel a little conviction. Or whenever you get that unexpected bill. Oh, Jesus. And that don't count as prayer. That don't count. But pray continually. Also, we are to pray and the Lord will give us spiritual power. We will have power. Power, if you'll pray, the Lord will give you power to overcome. Also, we are Ephesians to pray for winning the lottery. No. Pray for new cars. No. Pray one for another. Somebody's like, well, what is it? What am I supposed to pray? Pray one for another. I'm just going to, can I muddy the waters one more time, Brother McCammon? You know how the Bible says, love your enemies? How many of you think that's an easy thing? Well, if we're supposed to love our enemies, we're probably supposed to pray for them too. Because it says pray for those that despitefully use you. So not only one for another, not only my sisters and my brothers and my friends, pray for the ones that ain't my friends. Pray for the one that cheated me out of that $5. Pray for the, uh, pray for the one that took your parking spot at work. Pray for the one that stole your umbrella that day it was raining. Pray for that person. Pray for that person. I'm getting ready to close. We've got about five minutes. Fasting. Sister Rachel, come help me tonight. Fasting. We're getting ready to go into our fast. We're getting ready to go into our fast. How many of, uh, let me do it this way. Is there anybody here could give me a quick reason why we fast? Your opinion. And I'm not, if you're wrong, I'm not going to uh, laugh at you and point my finger. Anybody want to give a reason that you think we fast? Flesh under subjection? If somebody else said something, I couldn't hear it. Sacrifice? Great move of God. Build a relationship with God. Brother Daryl said something, but I couldn't hear it. Draws you closer by resisting sin. See, that all, man, these are all perfect answers. Perfect answers. See, sometimes people think that when we fast, we like, we manipulate God. It's not right, is it, Sister Kay? Because you can't make God do what he ain't going to do. Because he's God. Fasting does, and everything you said was right. I'm just going to kind of simplify and, and condense. Instead of fasting making God do what we want him to do, fasting gets us to do what God wants us to do. By pushing out sinful, carnal, worldly distractions, 
you're putting yourself in a position to where you can hear from God and align with God better. And I'll tell you something, that the Christian church struggles at fasting. We pray. I believe we all, I believe everybody in here prays. You may not pray well, you may not pray often, but you pray. And I believe most come to church because you're here. Most everybody tries to live a holy life. Everybody's at a different point in their walk. I understand that. But when I ask you, and I'm not going to because I'm not going to embarrass anybody, did you fast last month? Most people are not going to be able to raise their hand. The Christians don't fast well. And here, I'm going to show you something else. It's really going to make you feel spiritually this tall. Muslims do. Muslims do. Hindus do. Buddhists do. Catholics. Everybody's fasting. And Jesus said that when the bridegroom goes up, you're going to fast. And he even said that demonic possession and oppression goes out by prayer and fasting. You want help getting deliverance from an addiction? Fast your addiction. Fast your addiction. You know God don't like it anyway, so go ahead and use the next 21 days as a, as a preemptive laying it down period. Lay it down for 21 days and learn that you can live without it for 21 days. Live without pornography 21 days. Amen? Come on, somebody. Live without alcohol 21 days. Live without your vape 21 days. Live without your cigarette 21 days. Live without your chewing tobacco 21 days. Live without your bandits 21 days, too, in case I need to be specific. Live, live without it 21 days. If you can't keep a godly woman, live without one 21 days. You've got a wife, 21 days, try to live without somebody beside your wife if, you, if you're having trouble. <laughs> 21 days, learn how to fast what God don't want you to have. Let go of it. And pray during that period of time, God, help me not to pick it up again. Not saying that everything we fast should never be picked up, picked up again. We're fasting meat. There's nothing wrong with eating meat. We're just fasting. But use this time to lay aside every weight, everything that hinders you. If the first thing you do in the morning is get up, drink a cup of coffee, and I love a cup of coffee. My kids have been telling on me. Joel said, I believe my dad's drinking eight cups a day. Laura won't let me have that many. Four. Five, sometimes. Brother Elijah, when he was at my house, he said, Pastor, you're drinking too much coffee. I said, why? He said, you got five cups in your trunk. I went to my bathroom. I looked at my bathtub, and I had one sitting on the edge of the bathtub, too. I went back, and I said, hey, buddy, you're right. I got a dollar back. They're in the bathtub with me. But if that's the first thing I have to do in the morning, and I hadn't even thanked God for waking me up, maybe I need to lay something down. Lay aside a weight. Not every weight's a sin, but every sin is a weight. Amen? Let's stand up together tonight. I hope you got something out of the Word of the Lord tonight. I hope the Word of the Lord strengthened you. Amen? I hope the Word of God encouraged you, built you up. It's what it's supposed to do. I hope it helped you. Amen. I hope, David, when I was talking to you about your daughter growing up, I hope it scared you. It did. But it, it builds us up. That's what God's Word's supposed to do. Uh, build us up. If we could... I'm not going to pull you to the altar unless you want to come. But I do want to ask that you close your eyes and lift your hand as she sings. Across the sanctuary. And let's just pray 
a prayer that we ask the Lord to help us grow tonight. Just help us grow, Lord. Help me, God, see where I'm deficient. Help me, God, see where I'm not successful walking for you. Come on, somebody. Really do it tonight. Really do that tonight. Come on, ask the Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. With every breath that I am I will sing. This is a beautiful song. Now, if you want to come to an altar tonight, you're welcome to. You're welcome to walk down those aisles, walk forward with your hands raised, asking God to help you. All of my life, Jesus, Jesus, all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will see oh, yes. of the Oh, yes, somebody lift up the Lord. He's so wonderful, he's so wonderful. If you're a prayer warrior tonight, would you find a place and kneel and just begin to travail for somebody tonight? Would you do that? There may be somebody here that's standing in the need. All my life you have been faithful. Find an altar, somebody. Just take a knee tonight. All my life you have been so, so good with every breath. Lift those hands and pray. Magnify the Lord today. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, yes, lift your voice. Come on, saints, lift your voice. If you're not praying, worship. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing. I will sing. One more time, sister, let's worship. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will see of the good. Can we sing that his goodness is running after me? His goodness is chasing somebody tonight. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I I will 
Before we dismiss, remember tomorrow night, 7 o'clock addiction recovery. If you're part of that, don't miss tomorrow night. Last night, last week, there was a radio station, Piper Peach Gospel, that set up in our sanctuary, and we did we went live. And we set a list record for that radio station that night. Over 10,000 people listened to that. A little local radio station. Over 10,000 people heard. Also, invite somebody to church Sunday. And come ready to hear the word of God and let it change your life. Amen? Not just to fill a seat, but let God fill you when you fill a seat. Amen? God bless you tonight. You're, you're dismissed in Jesus' name.
Thank you. 